With JavaScript becoming increasingly complicated in web applications, it's a good idea to write automated tests for it. And a nice tool for doing so is Jasmine. This has an interface similar to RSpec with describe and it calls for defining the JavaScript behavior. So the big question is, how do we use Jasmine within a Rails application? Let me show you here in this episode. So here's the app we'll be working with. It's a new order form, and the user can type in a credit card number, and when they do so, I want to have some client-side validation check the number using a mod 10 algorithm. Now the JavaScript here is a little bit complicated, so I want to add this feature using test-driven development with Jasmine. Now there are many Ruby gems available to integrate Jasmine into Rails, but one of the best I've seen is Jasmine Rice by Brad Phelan. This has excellent support for the Rails asset pipeline, and it has the Jasmine jQuery project built right in. So here's how to set this up. First go into the gem file of your project, and I'm going to add this gem into the development and test groups, and it's just called uh, Jasmine Rice, one word. And as always, you'll need to install it with the bundle command. Next, make a new directory in your project at spec JavaScripts. Now even though RSpec also uses a spec directory, this is completely independent of that and doesn't require RSpec. Now inside of that directory, make a new file called spec.js.coffee. So this is the central file that will be included, and here we can require any other JavaScript files that we want to use within our specs. So we do that using Sprocket, so it works the same way as a Rails asset pipeline. So we could add a comment here with an equal sign saying require application, and that will load our main application.js file, which will basically include everything. But I find this a little bit too extensive, and I prefer to just pick and choose exactly what I want to require so we can more focus on what's needed inside of our specs. So instead, I just prefer to require jQuery here for now. And then after that, we need to add a require tree line so that it includes all other spec files within this directory. And that's good for this file. I'm going to make a new file here to write our specs for the credit card behavior. So I'll make a new credit card spec JS coffee file. By the way, I do recommend using CoffeeScript, but it's not required. You can leave the coffee extension off and just fall back to regular JavaScript. But I find that the Jasmine specs especially look much nicer in CoffeeScript. So in here, I want to describe a credit card class. And make sure to put a comma after that string there. And let's say it strips out spaces and dashes from the number. And then I'll make a new credit card and have it accept a number, how about one space two dash three. And then I can add an expect call to say that I want the card number to be uh, one, two, three without the spaces and dashes. Now if your Rails app is running, you can run the specs by passing Jasmine in the path. And this shows that the one spec is failing, saying it can't find the credit card class. And that's to be expected because I have yet to define it. So under my app assets JavaScripts directory, I'm going to make a new file in here and call it creditcardjs.coffee. And here I'll define a new class, call it credit card. And to make this available in our specs, we also have to add it to our spec.js coffee file because it only is including jQuery there. So I also need to include that credit card JS coffee file. And then reload the page. And we're still getting that same error. We still can't find that credit card class. So the problem is that CoffeeScript wraps each file within a scope, so variables defined in here are not available globally. To remedy this, we can set our credit card class to this.creditCard, which will be at the global scope. Now there's another way to do this, and that is to use an at sign right in the class definition. I haven't seen this technique used much, so I don't know if there are any downsides, but it seems to be working for my testing. And now when I reload my specs, I get a different error saying expected undefined to be one, two, three. And that's expected because we aren't saving the number in the class. So to fix this, I'll define a constructor, which takes a number. And in this, I'm going to set the class's number to that number, replacing any uh, spaces or dashes with an empty string. And reload our specs. And it's almost working. It says expected one, two, dash three to be one, two, three. So somehow a dash is getting in there. So already the specs have found a bug that's easy to miss. I forgot to add a G in the regular expression so that it replaces multiple occurrences. Now reloading and it should work. And it does. That spec passes. So that's an example flow of working with Jasmine. And if you check out the documentation on the site, this is pretty cool because the documentation are actual executable specs which show you, for example, the different matchers which you can do, such as to be truthy or falsy, uh, less than or greater than, and so on. And all of these specs in the documentation 
are actually executed at the bottom of the page here to show you that they all pass with Jasmine. Now we still have more to do in this application, so let me get back to writing some specs and use some of those matchers I showed. So I'm going to paste in the code for this just to speed things along. Here I make another it call and make sure that it validates the number using mod 10. So I'm going to make a valid card number that passes mod 10 and an invalid one and make a, a method call to valid number and it should be truthy for the valid one and falsy otherwise. And reloading the specs and that fails, not surprisingly, because we haven't defined that valid number function. And back in the credit card class, I'll paste in some code for that valid number, which does a mod 10 check. And we run our specs, and we're back to passing. Now even though most of the logic is implemented, we still need to present this to the user interface when they enter their credit card number. So I can do this with some jQuery, but how do we test drive this behavior? Well, the Jasmine jQuery project can help here, and this allows us to define HTML fixture files which we can load into the specs, and then it provides several matchers which we can use to check the jQuery behavior. We don't have to install anything extra since this is included with Jasmine Rice. We can jump right in and start creating fixture files. So I'm going to make a fixtures directory here, and then I'll make a new file in here, call it orderform.html. Uh, so this should contain some code that simulates the HTML produced by our application. I'm going to paste in a simple form here with a text field input with an ID of card number and provide a div with a class of error afterwards where the actual error message could be contained. Now we can write the spec. So uh, let's say it validates a number uh, when the field loses focus. And then we can load in the fixtures, load fixtures, then pass in the name, which is the order form file. And then I'll capture that uh, field, which has the ID of card number. And then we can simulate the user's behavior. So let's set the field value to an invalid card number and blur the field so that it loses focus. And then after that, we expect the field's uh, next error div that we had in the uh, fixture to have the text, which is a custom matcher in the Jasmine jQuery project. Uh, let's say it has a text of invalid card number. Now we have to add one more step to this process because when does the actual jQuery code get loaded in? It needs to apply to this fixture which is loaded directly in the spec. And normally when testing jQuery, I find it easiest to make a jQuery plugin so that way we can inject the functionality after the fixture is loaded. So what I'm thinking is on our field, we can call something like validate credit card number. And then when that happens, it will add that jQuery functionality. And we should see a failure when I reload the specs and we do because that function is not defined. Now I just have to implement this. I'll do it inside of this credit card file and paste in the code to define this jQuery plugin with a function called validate credit card number. And this will loop through each of the found elements and listen to the blur event on each of those elements and create a new credit card for each one passing in the value as the number and check if it's a valid number. And if not, it's going to grab that error div and set the text to invalid card number and reload the spec, and we're back in the green. So now we can use this jQuery plugin to add the behavior to our order form. However, all of our tests are currently green and passing, so how do we ensure that our plugin is hooked up properly at this high level? Well, I find uh, the Jasmine specs we've been writing so far aren't really good for testing uh, acceptance level behavior like this. Instead, I recommend using Capybara with a JavaScript driver such as Selenium or a headless WebKit. Now I go into further detail on that in episode 257. So I'm just going to continue on here and add this behavior as if I had some acceptance tests in place. So this is the order form template with that credit card number field. And I'm going to add a span with a class of error in here so that this uh, has a place for the error to go. And then I'll go into my orders JS coffee file and make sure that the DOM is loaded and then grab the ID for that. It's called order card number field and add the uh, validate uh, credit card number of Java jQuery plugin on it. So let's try this out in the browser, reloading this page. And when I enter in an inv invalid credit card number and lose focus, it tells me that it's invalid, it works. But if I correct this and then lose focus again, that error message still sticks around. So we have a bug here in our jQuery plugin. Now before fixing the bug, it's always best to duplicate the behavior in a failing spec. So I'm going to expand on this spec here and ensure we have a valid credit card number passed in to the field, and when it loses focus, then we should have nothing inside of our error class. And rerunning our specs, and we get that error message displayed exactly like the user saw it. It has invalid number where we expected to have no text. 
That's easy enough to fix inside of our jQuery plugin. I'll just add an else clause so that it sets the error to an empty string when it's valid. And reloading the page, and we get passing specs. So now let's try it out in the actual application. Uh, let's try an invalid number first. It displays the error. When I correct it with a valid number, the error goes away. It works. Now there's more we could do here, such as canceling the form submission when it's invalid, but this gives us a good start. I want to finish up this episode by showing you the Guard Jasmine gem. This is an awesome way to run your specs continuously as you're working. Now this is a headless, so it relies on PhantomJS, so you'll need to install that first. If you're on Mac OS X, I recommend installing through Homebrew with brew install PhantomJS. And then in the gem file of your application, just add the guard jasmine gem, and then run the bundle command to install it. And then run guard init jasmine to set up the guard file. And now when you run guard, it will monitor the spec JavaScript directory for changes. So let me show you a failure real quick by changing this test here. And that will show me the failing spec instantly in the console. And then when I fix it again, which I've done off camera, it instantly passes. So Jasmine really does make testing JavaScript a joy. And with projects like Jasmine Rice and Guard, it's so convenient to do so, why not? Well, that's for this episode. Thanks for watching.